Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Pradhan here. Today, we will discuss the concept multivariate econometric modeling. In fact, we have discussed this concept uh, last class little bit. So, today we will continue from that particular point of. So, uh, the basic framework of econometric modeling I means multivariate econometric modeling is that. So, we have a system where uh, there are dependent variables y which consists of y1, y2 up to yn and corresponding variables are x, x1 say x11, x12 up to x1n, then x2 consists of x21, x22, x2n. So, continue. So, xk is equal to, okay, for xk it is nothing but xk1, xk2, x k 2 uh, up to x k n. Okay. So, that means, we are targeting here a model, econometric models where there is a one dependent variable, we denote as y and uh, there are several independent variables that is here k number of variables are on the other sides as treated as a independent variables. So, now we like to see how is the setup and structure, the complexity, you know, the strategy of this particular uh, multivariate setup where there are k independent variables and one dependent variable exist. So, the basic framework is like that before we go to proceed means to discuss about all these details about multivariate econometry modeling. So, what I will like to represent here is, so here the basic framework of multivariate modeling is like this y equal to beta 0 plus summation beta i x i uh, i equal to 1 to n. In fact, this particular case it is equal to k then plus u. Okay. So, this is the starting point of multivariate analysis. So, what we have to do? We will simplify this one. So, this is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus beta k x k plus u. Okay. So, these are the, this is the basic format of multivariate modeling. So, now uh, before we go for estimation, so obviously by standard rule you have to know certain things or you have to assume certain things, so that we can able to go for this you know estimation, prediction and forecasting. So, the standard procedure is that as usual we have to apply OLS technique because this is the standard technique through which you will get the original estimated models. Of course, we can apply double voltage least square methods, uh, GLS generalized least square methods, maximum likelihood estimator methods. So, in the meantime, so we are not discussing any methods here. So, from the beginning, so we we are you know discussing each and every modules through OLS technique. So, we we also here present the OLS technique. So, later on we will discuss little bit about OLS technique or uh, WLS technique, GLS technique or maximum likelihood estimators. So, in the meantime, by using OLS technique, we like to know what is the shape and structure of econometric modeling. Even if you really apply uh, you know GLS, WLS and maximum likelihood estimators, the structure is more or less same. If, uh, of course, the path is a little bit different. So, here the standard assumption is that your uh, E of error term must be equal to 0. That means, if you apply OLS technique, so before applying OLS technique, you must have standard assumptions and on the basis of that standard assumption, you have to uh, estimate the models and later on the standard uh, the assumption has to be verified if not then you know we have to continuously you know redesign restructure the model till you get the best fitted model which can also satisfy the following OLS assumptions ok. So, first standard assumption is that e, u, e upon u, uh, u equal to 0 
okay so then covariance of u i u j is equal to 0 okay so the uh, then third is the um, covariance of u i u i u j is equal to sigma square u and in this case i not equal to j in this case i equal to j so this is the if that this is not satisfied then it is the serial correlation problem or autocorrelation problem so which in fact we discussed earlier so this is if not exist then it is called as a heteroscedacity problem heteroscedacity problem okay this is heteroscedacity problem and uh, fourth assumption is that covariance of u and x must be equal to 0 okay and uh, fifth assumption is that co correlation or covariance between x1 x2 okay equal to or correlation between x1 x3 or equal to correlation between x2 x3 like this so so many uh, so many you know uh, pairs you will find so it must be continue is also equal to 0 okay so this this particular structure is called as a multicollinearity problem multicollinearity problem okay so then of course the co obvious st standard assumption is that your n should be substantially greater than equal to uh, greater not equal to greater than to k okay greater than to k so n represents number of sample and k represents number of dependent i am sorry number of variables in the systems okay so last but not the least model must be correctly specified so last but not the least model is correctly specified that means before we apply wireless technique to this you know multivariate mathematical model to get the estimated model so we have to assume certain things these are the following assumption to by on the basis of this assumption we have to take the or we have to estimate the multivariate regression model so so how do you go for that so this is particular uh, this particular structure is you know uh, y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta k x k okay so this is how you have to proceed all right plus of course u all right so that means if you will if you will put it in a particular format then the structure will be like this this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 and continue this is xk okay so the structure will be coming like this okay so this particular structure is coming like this so followed by this is the beta 1 coefficient this is beta 2 coefficient this is beta 3 coefficient and this is beta k coefficient okay so by default there should not be any correlation between there should not be any correlation between x1 and x2 x1 x3 x1 xk x1 x2 x x2 x3 again x1 x3 and x1 xk so this is how the model is fitted here so our our objective is here to know this particular this particular items okay this particular item that means we like to know what is the estimated values of beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head up to beta k head so now how do we proceed so as usual you know the way we have discussed in the case of bivariate setup and tibriate setup the following setup can be also apply here to get this estimated model so what is this exact structure here the exact structure is that the exact structure is that we have y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus up to beta k x k plus u all right so now uh, this is the true regression models true regression model this is called as a true regression model so we let us assume that the estimated model will be y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head x2 plus beta k head xk plus obviously there is no plus so bk beta k head xk okay so these are the 
means this is the estimated model this is the estimated regression model so we have a original regression model then we have to assume a estimated model then by the by the way we have to make a difference and we will get the uh, error component so error is the difference between error is the difference between y minus y head so which is nothing but y minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 okay minus beta k head xk all right so now what you have to do here so here uh, we have to we have to minimize the error sum so summation e squares i equal to 1 to n is equal to summation y minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x1 minus beta 2 head x2 okay so minus beta k head xk okay i equal to 1 to n okay this is whole squares so this is the this is the uh, you know original setup for this uh, uh, OLS techniques so from this the new di new dimension will come up so that means we have to go by this optimization principles that is to uh, minimize the error sum square so that is nothing but the uh, the uh, uh, we have to that means we have to minimize the error sum square with respect to beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and up to beta k head so by default when we will apply the minimization rules so uh, d summation e square by d beta 0 head equal to 0 d summation e square by d beta 1 head equal to 0 and continue like d summation e square by d beta k head must be equal to 0 okay so this is the first order condition of course there is a second order sufficient condition so we are not going so much details because it's not a mathematics completely so here with the basis of the you know first order necessary condition we have to get the process okay done so the now so what is the structure the first step is the first step is to have the partial differ difference errors so, so d summation d summation e square by d beta 0 head is equal to 0 d summation e square by d beta 1 head is equal to 0 then d summation e square by d beta 2 head is equal to 0 and continue so finally equal to d summation e square by d beta k head equal to 0 okay this is how it is it is all about uh, means the process of the standardization so now what you have to do so we have to uh, we have to proceed for the next step so how will you proceed for this next step so this is how so now that means uh, what is d summation e square d summation e square by d beta 0 head is equal to is equal to uh, uh, summation uh, so, 2 summation y, 2 summation uh, y minus beta 0 head minus beta 1 head x1 minus beta 2 head x2, okay, minus minus beta k head xk, okay, okay, so into into minus 1 is equal to 0. Similarly, we have to, we, we have to, uh, you know, go for d summation e square by d beta 1 head, so this is 0. So, d beta 1 head, d summation e square by d beta uh, 2 heads. So, like this, d summation e square by d beta k heads. So, now if we will simplify this particular, so it will continue like this. So, now the, let us assume that this is the second step of this particular process, means a second step of this particular first structures, means that is the first or necessary conditions. So, in the, uh, in the step 3, what you have to do? We have to simplify this particular equation then we will put in a simultaneous equation so the, uh, uh, that simultaneous equation will help you to get the estimated values of beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and up to beta k head so now if we simplify this particular equation so uh, 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 how do we go for that so now it is nothing but summation summation y equal to n beta 0 head plus beta 1 head summation x1 plus plus beta 2 head summation x2 plus beta k head summation xk okay so summation summation xk x uh, x1 y is equal to beta 0 head summation x1 plus beta 1 head summation x1 squares 
plus beta 2 head summation x1 x1 x2 plus beta k head summation x1 xk okay uh, it will continue okay so then summation uh, xky xky is equal to uh, beta 0 head summation xk plus beta 1 head summation x1 xk plus beta 2 head summation x2 xk plus beta k head summation xk squares ok so this is how you have to proceed subsequently so now uh, we have to simplify this particular structure to get this beta heads ok so now by the way so what you have to do so if you will go by this particular process then beta 0 head beta 0 head will be beta 0 head will be like this so summation y then summation x1 then summation x2 up to summation xk ok then uh, uh, then summation x1 y then summation x1 square then summation x1 x2 then summation x1 xk ok so then um, summation x2 y summation uh, x2 uh, uh, summation x2 y summation x2 squares then summation x uh, sorry x2 x1 then summation x2 squares summation x2 xk ok then it will continue so uh, whole divide by whole divide by uh, whole divide by n summation x1 summation x2 then summation uh, summation x k ok divide by n sorry summation x1 summation x1 square summation x1 x2 then summation x1 x k so it will continue up to summation x k then summation x1 x k then summation x2 x k then summation x k square so this is how the structure in the last part this particular structures it will be summation x k y ok then summation x 1 x k summation x 2 x k ok summation x k uh, x k squares ok so this is how the this is how the first uh, beta 0 head so we will get beta 0 head is this much ok this is the beta 0 head so similarly similarly we we can have also beta 1 head so in the case of beta 1 head in the case of beta 1 head so we have we have n summation y summation x2 then up to summation xk ok then uh, summation x1 uh, summation x1 then summation x1 y ok then summation x1 x2 then summation x1 xk ok so then uh, this is summation xk this is summation x1 xk ok this is summation xk squares divide by divide by n summation x1 summation x2 summation xk then summation x1 summation x1 square summation x1 x2 summation x1 xk continue summation xk summation x1 xk then summation x2 xk summation xk squares ok so this is how the entire structure so that means the beta 1 head coefficient beta 1 beta, beta 1 head coefficient will be like this so this is this is what beta 1 head coefficient so beta 1 head coefficient is a, 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 this particular domain by this particular domain so similarly we have to calculate the beta 1 head, beta 2 head beta 3 head beta k head so now uh, by the way uh, uh, we can again simplify in a deviation format the way we have done in the case of trivariate econometry 
So what we have to do here? So in fact, it is a very complicated thing. So the way you will design ultimately uh, by you know by hand or you know manually, it is very difficult. So you have to apply some advanced technique like you know matrix approach to solve this particular problem very quickly. In fact, you can apply here also. This is nothing but in a, a you can say a, a matrix format. Even if you, you like to know the value of this particular matrix and value of this particular matrix, then you can get the beta 1 head. Similarly, you can get the value of beta 0 head. So, uh, 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 that in that process, in that process, so you, you, will, you will continue like beta 2 head, beta 3 head, beta 4 head, and up to beta k head. So, now what is the standard procedure here? The as usual, you, you have to calculate beta 0 head is nothing but y bar minus beta 1 head x1 bar, beta 2 minus beta 2 head x2 bars, like beta k head xk bars. Okay. So, uh, so first and uh, foremost step is that, so you have to first find out beta 1 head, beta 2 head and beta k head. The moment you will get this, these betas, then you will put in first equation where beta 0 head equal to y, y, y bar minus beta 1 head x1 bar, beta 2 head x2 bar and so on up to beta k head xk bar. So, the moment you will put all these values, then you will get beta 0 head. So, no point to calculate beta 0 head immediately. So, you have to calculate the subsequent items. Obviously, the within this means with these subsequent items, you can have the beta 0 heads. Okay. So, this is how you have to, you have to simplify this entire procedures. So, now what you have to do? So, the standard procedure is that if you will simplify further, then uh, then it will be coming like this. It can be also deviation format. So ultimately, the standard structure is that y equal to beta zero head. Uh, sorry, y okay beta zero head uh, plus beta one head x one plus beta two head x two plus beta k head x k. Okay, plus continue. Okay. Sorry, uh, this is beta three head x3 and plus continue up to beta k head xk. So, this is how you two proceeds, alright. So, now uh, the moment you will get all these items, then obviously next step is you have to go for the reliability checking. So, that means let us assume that the standard estimated model for this particular multivariate model is like this. So, that is y head equal to beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head x2 plus beta 3 head x3, okay, up to beta k head xk. So now, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, what is the first objective here? So now we, we have to assume that, no sorry, we have to uh, means we have to observe that uh, these parameters are statistically significant, okay. So and second thing is the overall fitness of the model will be statistically significant. So that means we are not going so much complexity to derive all these, you know, beta copy, coefficients simultaneously. Since in the case of you know bivariate modeling, so we have two components beta 0 head and beta 1 head. In the case of trivariate, it is beta 0 head, beta 1 head, and beta 2 head. So, uh, so it is a, it is you know mandatory that you need to have a information about beta 0 head, beta 1 head, and beta 2 head. But in the case of multivariate, up to when there is a k, k independent variables are there, and k you can say k number of uh, parameters are there, then obviously, so in that contest it is very difficult to go manually and it is it is not practically feasible to uh, uh, calculate uh, you know indi independently the beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head and up to beta k head. So, uh, we remember one thing when we have multivariate problems like this either you go directly to the software, uh, software or else you have to go you can say uh, by matrix approach. If you will apply the matrix approach, you can have the results also very quickly. We will, uh, I will highlight little bit here about this, you know, matrix approach, how this multivariate uh, complexity problem can be very simple way, uh, can be analyzed in a very simple way. Okay, so this is a, I means uh, I will discuss this concept later. Let me first highlight here the practical feasibility of this particular estimated model. So, we have two different objectives here, once the estimated model with you. So, first objective is to know the significance of the parameters. So, that is the, that is the significance, significance of parameters, okay. And second is the overall fitness of the model, okay, overall fitness of the, overall fitness of the model.
so uh, first is the significance of parameters and second is the, the overall fitness of the model so uh, overall fitness of the model uh, of course it depends upon r square and adjusted r squares so and it is followed by uh, you know f statistics so this is significance of parameter means all beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head up to beta k head uh, are also uh, means we need to have a t beta 0 head t beta 1 head t beta 2 head to beta k uh, beta uh, k head so this has to be statistical significance so that means it is the through t t statistic we have to we have to follow up the significance of the parameters and through f statistic we have to signify the overall fitness of the models okay so now uh, so we need two different tables altogether so I, I i am briefly highlighting here so uh, if you don't go for this tabular form then it's better so what is the usual format of estimation process so now we have you know y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x1 plus beta 2 head x2 okay up to beta k head xk okay so we need here variance of beta 0 head okay we need here variance of beta 1 head we need here variance of beta 2 head we need here variance of beta k head okay variance of beta k heads okay uh, variance of beta k heads so followed by t of beta 0 head t of beta 1 head t of beta 2 head and t of beta k heads okay t of beta 0 head t of beta 1 head t of beta 2 head t of beta k heads okay so then followed by probability level of significance probability level of significance probability level of significance probability level of significance that means the standard rule is here is that like you know bivariate format and trivariate format so we first get the estimated value of beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and beta k heads that means estimated value of all these parameters kth number of parameters and followed by you have to calculate the variance of all parameters so beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and you can say beta k head so the moment you will get variance of all these parameters then you have to go for you know standard uh, standard errors so that is the square root of all these variance variances so that is beta, variance of beta 0 head variance of uh, variance of beta 1 head variance of beta 2 head and variance of beta k head so now so now the moment you will get the standard error of beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and beta k head then obviously you have to set the null hypothesis uh, uh, that means you have to set the null hypothesis uh, for beta 0 head beta 1 head beta 2 head and beta k head so that means your null hypothesis is h 0 such that beta 0 head not equal to 0 beta 1 head not equal to 0 beta 2 head not equal to 0 and beta k head not equal to 0 then the alternative hypothesis it means against the uh, against null hypothesis the alternative hypothesis is that beta 0 head not equal to 0 beta 1 head not equal to 0 beta 2 head not equal to 0 and up to beta k head not equal to 0 so that is how the fitting of null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis then by the by the process since it is equal to 0 then obviously t of beta 0 head is nothing but beta 0 head by standard error of beta uh, standard error of beta 0 head then for you know t of beta 1 head is equal to beta 1 head by standard error of beta 1 head then t of beta 2 head equal to beta 2 head by standard error of beta 2 head so you will continue like this up to beta k head so that means you ultimately you like to know what is the t of all these parameters means t statistic of all these parameters the moment you have all these uh, uh, parameters means t statistic of all these parameters that is uh, uh, that is your you know calculator t statistics then have, again you have to compare the tabulated statistic with respect to the number of observations and you know uh, particularly the degrees of freedom so that means here we like to see uh, again you have to go by this you know uh, uh, significance level 1% 5% and 10% so now uh, for instance you know uh, for beta 0 head uh, you have to see whether the calculated t of beta 0 head is substantially greater than to tabulated t beta 1 head and if it is so then at what level is it significant at 1 percent level or it is significant at 5 percent level or it is significant at 10 percent level so that means uh, you have to go individually for each and every parameters 
and the requirement is that each parameter has to be statistically significant. So, that one that means beta beta 0 head must be statistically significant means most probably we always we always expect that this should be significant at the most means at the highest level. So, that means at the at most at the 1 percent level. So, we are expecting that beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head all these parameters should be statistically significant and 1 percent. So, this is our you know assumption or you can say expectations. It may not happen. So, if it is happens then it is very fine. Okay. If it is happened then we have to see the other side of the problem that is the overall fitness of the models. That means, if the all if all the parameters are you know highly significant at 1 percent then obviously, by default R square should be statistically highly significant uh, uh, otherwise uh, it will go other way around. So, that means, if all these parameters are star, uh, high uh, all these parameters are statistically significant and other side R square is not statistically significant. That means, in typically you can say let us say uh, all these parameters are statistically significant at 1 percent level, but in the case of R square it is statistically significant at 10 percent. So, then st still the problem can be fitted or cannot be considered as the best model for forecasting or policy use. So, that means, uh, the standard structure is that if you know all these parameters are statistically significant at 1 percent level, then in the other side R square should be say, you know statistically significant at 1 percent level. Otherwise, if it is 1 percent levels and if it is 5 percent this is ok, but still the model cannot be uh, it cannot be called as a best fitted models. But in reality it is very difficult to find a situation particularly for multivariate problems where all these parameters are highly statistically significant. So, that means, it is very difficult to find a situation where all these parameters are statistically significant at 1 percent. So, there is a lots of you know ups and downs. That means, if one param few parameter the few parameters are statistically significant at 1 percent, few parameters are statistically significant at 5 percent and few parameters are statistically significant 10 percent or there may be chance that few parameters are also not statistically significant. You know the model may be very accurate may be practically uh, I cannot say practically feasible, but it will be uh, it will be uh, more justified if few param uh, means this type of structure must be there in the model means most of the variables are statistically significant at a higher level then followed by few are at the medium level that is at the 5, five percent level and few are also at the 10 percent level that is at the lower level uh, uh, and few parameters say 1 or 2 sh should be should not be statistically significant. If such type of model is in front of you then you know uh, it will be considered or it can be practically true, but in other case if all these parameters are statistically significant then you know you, uh, be, uh, yes this model is uh, no doubt about it is considered as the best model and can be user forecasting, but still there is a strong doubt about this type of models and further before using that the model for forecasting and policy use, you have to go through very carefully once again you know with respect to problem setup, data setup, data entry and estimation and also the uh, significance choice means criteria how you whether this is ok or not. So, then you have to say that yes this is the correct model and it can be considered as the best models and it can be used as the policy use and you can say forecasting. But if majority of the parameters are not statistically significant, but R square is a, you can say highly significant then the problem has a lots of problem and that is most natural sometimes. For instance, uh, uh, R square is usually calculated with the a ratio between explained sum square by total sum square. So, total sum square is always uh, same whether you are in the bivariate format or trivariate format or multivariate format. If you include one independent variable whatever uh, uh, you know TSS you will get it. For instance, we have a y information then in the first problem we have y x 1 in the second problem same y with he, a x 1 x 2. Okay. So, y x 1 then in the second case the same y x 1 then we add another variable x 2 then we take a third case. So, same y x 1 and x 2 then we put another variable x 1 uh, x 3. So, this is how you have to proceed one after another. 
So, if you will proceed like this, you know, uh, y with 1x1 and y with 2x1, uh, 2x and uh, y with 3x like this, then obviously, in, in each case, the summation y square is always constant, because we are we are copying and pasting the same y value everywhere in this particular setup. Okay. So, obviously, if you compare in all cases, then summation y square is always equal, whether it is a bivariate problem, whether it is a trivariate problem or whether it is a multivariate problem. So, that is why there is a possible chance that a few parameters are not statistically significant. Uh, or you can say most of the parameters are not statistically significant or a significant at the very lower level, but uh, R square will be statistically significant at the higher level. In this particular context, the, you know the modeling is very interesting because uh, by means you have to assume that this model is not considered as the best model. So, as a result you have to again go for you know rotation or reformulation etcetera till you get the best fitted models. Of course, it is a very continuous process and in fact, in the multivariate case the complexity or the process is you know very volatile or you can say very flexible in nature. So, it depends upon the situation setup and you know problem information. So, now uh, accordingly you have to see the situation and find out the best model for you. So, that means, the degree of decision making is very high in the case of multivariate models, multivariate model uh, econometric modeling. So, in that case there are you know number of constraints with respect to x and you know um, various side problems are there before you handle this particular model or before you call that the model is the best fitted model. So, this is one part of the story with respect to specification of the parameters. The second part of the story is that we need to have this means it is the question of overall fitness of the model, overall fitness of the overall fitness of the model. So, that is as usual. So, you have some squares uh, so means first is sources of variations, sources of variations, then some squares, then mean some squares, then residue, uh, then you can say degrees of freedom then of course, uh, you know f statistics uh, first will be r square then f then will be probability value of significance. This is how you have to proceed. So, this is nothing but explain some square, this is residual sum square, uh, this is you can say uh, total sum squares. Okay. So, as usual the structure is more or less same. So, this is otherwise called as a summation y hat square, this is summation e square, this is summation uh, summation uh, y square. Okay. So, obviously, this is summation y hat square by a, a you know k minus 1 here. So, here you know if it is k then obviously k minus x equal to 0. So, obviously, there will be some uh, gap here. So, okay. so, summation y square is also divided by number of freedom and summation y square by obviously, it is n minus 1. Okay. So, this should be n minus k. So, we have to see some degrees of freedom here, because we are considering here k as the total number of variable. So, obviously, it will be little bit complex, but let us say uh, uh, there is a you know model up to you can say m m, then obviously, you will find out k minus n. So, okay. So, this is how the degrees of freedom. That means, uh, 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 that means, we have to see oh, what are the uh, degrees of freedom uh, for this particular context. Means, in this particular context, degree of freedom is very important, because it is a multivariate problem. So, like, so, uh, so this is you know r square E s s by T s s and obviously, f is E s s by R s s. Okay. So, similarly, this is nothing but summation y hat square by summation y square, this is summation y hat square by summation e square. Okay. So, this is how you have to proceed. So, the, this particular structure is like this, this is summation e square. So, this is this is the a structure of particularly called as overall fitness of the model and otherwise it is called as a n over test okay analysis of variance it is called as a analysis of variance it is called as a analysis of variance oh, where there are three standard uh, you know components is very important that is explain some square residual some square total some squares and followed by summation y hat square summation e square summation y square 
and corresponding with the help of degrees of freedom we have to calculate the r square and f statistics okay so um, most probably in the case of multivariate model r square should not be very less by default it will be very high because number of x variables are substantially high so as a result most of the most of the multivariate cases you will find r square is substantially high but the major uh, difficulty is that or major problem is that uh, you may not get all these parameters are statistically significant but reverse is always true that means there is enough chance that r square will be highly significant and you can say parameters are not all parameters are not statistically significant but by default you know r square will get high and obviously it can be there is enough chance that it may be significant but in the same times in the same times you can say uh, your uh, uh, significance of parameter uh, it may not be true so see there may be few are significant there are there are uh, few may not be significant at lower level or there are certain uh, situation there are statistically insignificant that means there is also chance that all all parameters may not be significant so while r square will be very high but uh, r square high does not mean and does not mean that it is you know significant so it has to be checked through f statistic because uh, when r square is high with respect to the involvement of you know independent variable then obviously we need to calculate first adjusted r squares okay so which is uh, which is the you know um, which is considered as the best uh, you know indicator rather than r square but whatever uh, components you will use r square or adjusted r square it has to be tested so obviously we have to go for this f statistics so the moment you will go for f statistics so f statistic is always followed by degrees of freedom that means we have not mentioned here the degrees of freedom there is a degrees of freedom here and there is a degrees of freedom here so we have to find out the degrees of freedom then with the basis of this degrees of freedom the significance of r square may be you can say it may affect uh, but uh, but by and large r square will be substantially high whether it is significant or not that depends upon the sample observations because uh, yes of course the uh, situation is very interesting when number of you know number of samples are also very high number of variable setups are very high then in that case there is enough chance that r square will be substantially high and in the same times f is statistically significant this is okay but in the other side majority of the parameters are not statistically significant so in this particular setup it is okay if the sample observation is true enough then this involvement of variables means particularly independent variables so you will get both higher square and both high value of f statistics but in the second in the same times there is, uh, means it is not mandatory that if you will get higher square and high f value that all these parameters in this side will be statistically significant but the reverse is always true reverse is always true mean that uh, if you means if all the parameters are highly statistically significant then there is a it means possibility of 99 percent chance that uh, you will get this r square and f statistic is uh, means both are statistically significant so in that context you have to find out a means you have to formulate a problem in such a way so that both can be go simultaneously that means all these parameters has to be statistically significant and it's not mandatory that it should be significant or means all parameters should be significant at one percent level even if you are one percent level if you are five percent level if you are ten percent level does not matter but uh, should be uh, majority of the parameters should be statistically significant and r square will be statistically significant but if you find a particular situation where few are statistically significant at the higher level few are statistically significant at the lower level and few are non-significant in other side r square is high and f is statistically significant so here there is a means there are two methods or two criteria here to choose the best fitted models there is a technique called as a stepwise regression so stepwise regression if you will go one by one then obviously it means step by step you will get the model which is absolutely you know best for this forecasting or policy use 
the uh, means the problem is here that means the moment you will get a model estimated model where few parameters are statistical significant and few parameters are not statistical significant then in that context uh, what happens oh, the variables which are not statistical significant may be uh, or can be dropped okay in the present context so now uh, so uh, let us assume that there are uh, there are 10 variables in the system that means if k equal to 10 so let us assume that there is a few variables say x7 or x6 is it uh, you know not significant so what you have to do you first drop x6 then you estimate the model and you check whether after dropping x variables other variables are statistically significant and r square is high and also it is highly statistically significant then if it is okay then it's fine okay otherwise you drop x7 then you again estimate the models and you check all these parameters relevant parameters should be highly statistically significant and r square will be high then followed by f is also statistically significant okay if it is if you know you will get the all these all these parameters are highly significant after dropping x7 and in the same time r square and f are very high then uh, that is considered as the best model for, for you know forecasting and policy use but um, by the way if you drop x6 or x7 if other variables are insignificant in the same time then there is a again problem the problem is more complex for instance some variable may not statistically significant but it has a substantial integration or you can say connection to other variables that means some variables may indirectly influence and that has a significant impact on y so now if you drop that particular variables then obviously the impact of the additional variable means previous variables say x3 will be get hampered so that means x3 may not be significant but if you add if you include x6 then obviously x3 will be active and it will influence on y so the, this type of problems basically or you can say you have to face in the case of multivariate model, model. So that is how multivariate problem is a very complex uh, problems and it, has a, it is very you know it is in fact very serious, serious challenge to you know analysis or researchers particularly you know those who are estimating or analyzing the particular problem or you can say analyzing the data setup. So, uh, we need a situation or we need a problem or information by the way we have to get the estimated model and that model means the way we will estimate the model uh, most, most of the cases all these parameters should be statistically significant and you can say r square and f should be substantially very high. But you know uh, uh, if few, uh, few uh, out of which a few variables are highly significant and few variables are not significant then in that case you have to check cross check the, by dropping this variable whether there is any kind of improvement in the rest of the models okay for instance if you are dropping x6 then rest of the item x1 up to x10 means without having the x6 involvement and obviously r square and f then you check the model so that means like this so what you will do here is you have three different so let us say y is x1 up to x2 up to x 10 okay so now by the way uh, okay i will write it here x3 x4 x5 x6 x6 this is x7 then let's say okay uh, this is x5 this is x6 okay we'll take uh, x7 years uh, x7 years all right it's better i'll write it once again uh, y equal to uh, x1 uh, x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 okay x9 x10 okay let us assume that the model consists of you know one dependent variable y and uh, 10 independent variables uh, independent variable that is x okay so now you go by estimation process by the way this is significant 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 and this this is not significant okay let us assume that this is not significant this is significant then this is significant and this is not significant okay and this is significant r square is it by default it's very high and f is also default very high okay this is by default it's very high so now 
this model can be practically can be uh, considered as the best models practically considered as the best model still you know for your know, feasibility part of the concern or you can say reliability part is concerned so what you have to do you make an experiment okay so this is you can say original case and you call it case one so what you have to do you go to case two you know what you have to do you take models y equal to x1 x2 up to you know x1 x2 then x3 x4 x5 dropping x6 okay then x7 x8 x9 x10 okay check it the model status then case 3 case 3 you take another case y equal to x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x7 x8 and then uh, uh, x9 is dropping here uh, then it is x10 okay so now there are three different cases so what you have to do this is already in front of you so you have to go for this estimation and you check the r square value and the significance of these parameters so by dropping this variable if the significance of these parameters are relatively very high high level of significance and r square is relatively high and f is relatively high then that will be best con considered as a best otherwise if it is a affecting the significance level at the lower level then it is better to reject this particular case too and you then you proceed to case 3 by case 3 you have to again re-estimate the model then by the drop means by the process of dropping x9 if all these parameters significance level is relatively high and r square f is relatively high then again you uh, means it is considered as the best middle to case ones okay but by the drop means by the process of dropping x9 if you know x the significance of all other variables will be drastically reduced and r square f is drastically reduced obviously r square will not uh, uh, r square will reduce because we have already dropped one variable but we have to check whether this r square is you know adjusted r square is uh, relatively okay and f is statistically significant and other variables level of significance is also relatively high if it is okay then it is considered as the best fitted model than case one so if it is not okay means after dropping this variable suppose a few other variables are you know its significance level is lower level than the original case then it's better you remove this case 2 and case 3 you go ahead with the case 1 so that means even if in the case 1 two variables are not statistically significant that will be considered as the best model and can be used for forecasting okay so this is how the basic problems you have to face in the multivariate models so these are lots of complexity so that complexity you have to work out there are uh, there are various or uh, trial er error and methods you have to apply to get the model best fitted okay so either you re re redesign the models restructure the models then reformulate the data setup reformulate the problem setup till you get the best fitted model so whatever uh, you know structural change you have to do so all these cases the model uh, you know estimation information may be different okay most of the cases it will be unique means very rare case it will be unique but most of the cases uh, you will find the difference of results okay so if you change the setup so ultimately we are going for experiment to get the best fitted model so now in addition to that you will face lots of uh, different complexity like you know various variables uh, in, uh, inclusion and exclusion so it will it, it is very interesting game so far as a uh, regression technique called as a stepwise regression so by this you know technique we can get to know uh, means if you go by stepwise technique then it is you know uh, first you have to track which particular variable is the most important variable that means that you have to target with the help of t value so we, we quickly make a look uh, look with respect to all these parameters coefficient then we have to find out the t statistics then if the t statistic of a particular variable say x5 is substantially higher than the other t statistic then we have to include first that per, uh, 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 first step okay so that is how the process of step wise then you have to uh, collect r square and f then you you enter the next next highest t value okay so that variable has to be included so again you have to check r square and f r square will be very high substantially okay so once you move one by one but in the same time you have to check the f statistic but in the same time you have to see the variable should be significant uh, equally then you add third variable third highest variables then 
th then by the way all these variables should be significant and r square will be high f will be substantially high so you continue this process till you get till you get the best fitted model and you have to end in that particular point where the inclusion of a particular variable inclusion of a particular variable uh, you know will not uh, you can say improve anything about r square f or significance of the parameters so that is the criteria through which we have to we have to judge a best models in a multivariate case so multivariate case is a very complicated case very in fact in sometimes it's very interesting because it gives lots of uh, structural frameworks through which you have to uh, go here and there to get the best fitted models. So, with this we will conclude this session. So, in the next class I will discuss the uh, matrix approach of this multivariate modeling. So, the way we have discussed here in fact it is a, a it is very much related to uh, very much related to simultaneous equation format without having means uh, direct touch of matrix. But you know, uh, in a next class, I will discuss a format where, you know, by the beginning, we have to apply matrix and we can conclude with the matrix so that it will be very easy and uh, you can get the uh, answers very quickly. Even if by the matrix approach multivariate problem, uh, you can in the class itself, you can solve that particular problem. So, okay, so it is a very interesting game. So, we will discuss this detail in the next class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.